Pat Benatar, Debbie Harry, and Joan Jett are three legendary female rockers who got their start in the 70s. All three are around today, though they certainly look a lot different than they used to. Join Facts First as we present She Was a Music Icon in the 70s, But Time Has Not Been Kind. Pat Benatar The first musician we'll be taking a look at is Pat Benatar. Pat was born on Long Island in January 1953. Her mother was an opera singer, though she put her career on hold to take care of Pat. Pat actually went on to become a classical singer in her own right before becoming a pop star later on. The Long Island suburb Pat was raised in was called Lindenhurst, and she attended Lindenhurst High School. There, she sang in the school's musical theater department. Even during these years, Pat's vocal range was already impressive. The young woman boasted a vocal range of four and a half octaves, which her contemporaries would have a hell of a time competing with. The exceptional singing skills Pat showed off during her high school career paid off in spades once it came time for her to seek a higher education. She ended up being accepted into Juilliard, though she shockingly decided not to attend the prestigious school. Instead, she married her high school sweetheart and tried to start up an unassuming life with him in Virginia. But that didn't prove right for Pat. Pat Benatar's high school sweetheart was a man named Dennis. He was a soldier, and Virginia was where he was stationed. While living with Dennis in Virginia, Pat worked part-time as a bank teller while functioning predominantly as a housewife. The lifestyle began to bore her sooner than later, so she took to passing the time with an old hobby. She got the itch to sing again. She found the opportunity to do so in grand fashion when she joined a local cabaret band called Coxon's Army. The band performed all over the place on the club circuit in Richmond, Virginia. The band was already somewhat popular, and their popularity increased when Pat joined. This boosted her confidence, so she soon headed to New York City. She first started turning heads in New York when she performed during an amateur night at the famous Manhattan nightclub Catch a Rising Star. This led to her starting to get paid work, though she was initially branded as a much more pop-oriented artist than she would have preferred. According to Pat, most of her early gigs found her performing classics in the vein of Judy Garland. What Pat really wanted to do was be a rock star. Things picked up when she met a man named Neil Giraldo, who went on to become her guitarist. Neil's hard-rocking style was just what Pat had been looking for, and they were a great match. Pat subsequently realized she could double the amount of attention the audience gave her by wearing more sultry and revealing clothing. With her new rock guitarist and new sultry image, Pat was ready to take the world of rock and roll by storm. Her first album came out in 1979, which was the same year she called it quits on her first husband. The debut album was a modest success, though true fame came the rocker's way in 1980 with the release of the song Hit Me With Your Best Shot. The song was a massive hit, and even more hits followed for the singer during the ensuing decade, with songs like Love Is A Battlefield and We Live For Love. After over a decade of being one of the biggest female rock stars on the planet, Pat began to slow down in her career during the 90s. Her last two albums featuring new material were 1997's Inamorata and 2003's Go. As is typical with recording artists, the success of these recordings paled in comparison to the success of the recording Pat released during her heyday. Despite the fact that Pat is far from the big rock star she once was, she still pops up every once in a while with a new song. In 2015, she released a song specifically for the holiday season, and it was called One December Night. In 2017, she released a feminist anthem called Shine. The release coincided with the Woman's March. That same year, she released a song called Dancing Through the Wreckage. This song was included on the soundtrack of a documentary about a pageant for female veterans called Served Like a Girl. Debbie Harry Debbie was born in Florida in 1945. When she was three months old, a couple adopted her, named Richard and Catherine Harry, and they moved her to New Jersey. By the time she was a teen, Debbie was spending a lot of time in New York City. She also began working as a Playboy bunny. She loved frequenting Max's Kansas City. Despite the name, it was actually a popular nightclub in Manhattan that drew notable guests like Andy Warhol. In 1968, Debbie made her first bid at becoming a professional singer when she joined a folk band called Wind in the Willows. Debbie was a backup singer for the band, and she can be heard singing on its first and only release. The band ended up breaking up not long after the release of this album because they weren't finding commercial success. 
1973 was a fateful year for Debbie, as that was the year she met Chris Stein. Not only did Chris become her romantic partner, but the two also formed a band together. Before forming Blondie in 1974, Debbie and Chris performed in a more theatrical rock group called The Stilettos. However, they believed their work with Blondie was where the future lied. It took a while for Debbie and Chris's faith in their new project to pay off, as Blondie didn't find the two musicians wanted until the end of the decade. And while Blondie didn't find instant success, it did end up becoming one of the most notable rock acts of the late 70s and early 80s. Some of the band's most successful songs include Call Me and Heart of Glass. They broke up in 1982, though Debbie continued finding work over the course of the rest of the decade as a popular musician and as an actress on the big screen. She's released five solo albums and appeared in the cult classic David Cronenberg film Videodrome. She's still around today, though the hard-rocking life she's lived made it so most people probably wouldn't recognize her. But even so, Debbie stays active and isn't afraid to perform when she's asked to, whether it's with her old group Blondie or by herself. Joan Jett Joan Jett was born in 1958, and she received her first guitar at age 13. But she didn't take to the instrument at first, because her instructor was adamant that she should only play folk songs. What Joan really wanted to do was play rock music, and her dream paid off. She found initial success working with the all-girl group The Runaways. It's remembered for its song Cherry Bomb. They were a successful group, but Joan went on to find even more success as a solo artist. After The Runaways broke up, Joan formed her own group called Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. With that band, she released timeless rock hits like I Love Rock and Roll and Bad Reputation. While female rockers like Pat Benatar and Debbie Harry had a pop sheen that often covered up their hard rocking edges, Joan was a true rocker through and through, who could butt heads with any other figure in the industry. She's also an accomplished guitarist, not only a vocalist. Like Debbie, Joan has also done some work as an actress. This included a turn on Walker, Texas Ranger. More recently, she appeared in the cartoon show Steven Universe. These three women were some of the biggest female rock stars of the 70s. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know Pat Benatar could have been an opera singer and that Blondie's Debbie Harry got her start singing backup for a folk band? Let us know in the comments section below.